What's going on, growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey today. Me and Tucker are going to share with you 10 household items you can use to improve your garden for free. Let's go! The first useful household item is a Q-tip. If your squash plants develop little mini squash that turn yellow and die off before they mature, it's because they weren't properly pollinated. Squash need bees to pollinate their flowers, and their flowers don't remain open for a long period of time. If you have a few days of rain and the bees aren't out, you can use a Q-tip and go over to your squash flowers. Go to the male flower. This is the one with no squash at the base of the flower. Take your Q-tip and gently swirl it on the inside of the male flower to get some pollen on it you should see some yellow pollen on the Q-tip. Then take your Q-tip and bring it over to the female flower. These are the ones with the mini squash at the end of it. Take your Q-tip and use it to pollinate the female flower. This way you can ensure yourself pollination and guarantee yourself more squash. You can also use the male flower to pollinate the females. You could pop one of the male flowers off and bring that over to all the females. But using the Q-tip is a good safe way to do it if you don't have that many male flowers by the time all the female flowers come out. The second household item is a clothespin. When it comes to growing fruit trees, it's important to prune and train them to the shape most suitable for the kind of tree that you're growing. When I first plant my apple trees, I make sure to prune them to a central leader. And I use clothespins to train the branch angles to 60 degree angles. I do this because the angle of the branches will determine whether the branch focuses on leaf production or fruit production. These clothespins are the perfect tool to help spread the limbs on my young apple tree. The third useful item is an egg carton to start your seeds in. I use this plastic egg carton because it acts like a mini greenhouse. Just make sure before you use it, you cut some holes in the bottom to allow for drainage. Then just fill the cells up with soil and plant your seeds. I chose to plant an orange hat tomato and some eggplants. I wouldn't start large seeds in here like squash because the cells are just too shallow. I suggest sticking with small seeds like tomatoes, lettuce, eggplants, things like that. Since the cells aren't very deep, I would suggest transplanting out of the carton when the plants get two true leaves. The fourth item is a clear gallon jug, which will act like a mini greenhouse. I simply cut the bottom part of the jug off with a scissor so that it would lay flat on the ground. This will act as a form of protection for one plant during cold nights, and it will help the plant grow quicker using the greenhouse effect. It will work especially well if you got too excited and transplanted out a tomato too early, and now you're getting a cold, windy night. Just make sure to build up some wood chips or some soil around the jug. This way it won't blow over. Let's take the jug off and see how while the tomato is growing. Pull it off just like that. Look how beautiful and healthy it is. We had a couple cold nights, but the jug really helped to protect the tomato. Tuck seems to give it a tuck approved too, which is always a good thing. We got the little boss out here with us, having a blast. Me and Tuck want to mention, if you're enjoying the video, to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button. If you want to continue following along, as the growing season has just gotten started, the garden's looking great and we're real excited for, uh, to get our first massive harvests. I also want to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a Gardening is Life shirt with a flower of life on it. Me and Tuck love being out here. We love that you guys are a part of the team. So we just are thankful for these opportunities and this guy's glistening in the sun, enjoying himself. You can see he's got the brown nose. He's been digging out there, so he's got dirt all over his nose. He's having fun. We're just having a blast enjoying the nice weather. The fifth item is dish soap. You want to pick a dish soap that doesn't have added fragrances and isn't a degreaser. You want it to be pure. I had a bunch of aphids on my young plants, so I made a dish soap spray. I used between two and four tablespoons of dish soap per gallon of water, mixed it together, and then added that to my sprayer. Make sure you spray the top and bottom sides of the leaves because the insects need to be completely covered with the soapy spray in order for it to be effective. You can see the plants look really nice now, and the soapy spray helped to kill off the aphids. Let's check out one of the bottom of the leaves. Adding some cold pressed neem oil to the spray will make it even more effective if you want to spend a few dollars. I got mine over on Amazon. The sixth item is a plastic bottle or solo cup. Both of these are great to start seeds in and they give the roots of the plant more room to grow than the egg carton does. Make sure you cut holes in the bottom of them so they can drain. I just use a razor to cut a few holes at the bottom of the container. This way the water doesn't pool up at the bottom and cause the soil to go anaerobic. Then I fill them up with soil and plant my seeds in them. They do take up more space than planting in something like a seed cell but they allow the plants to grow larger in them, so that means less transplanting. The cups are also deeper than something like a four inch pot like right here. So they're a really good option if you don't have hundreds of tomatoes that you need to plant. The seventh household item you can use is cardboard. Cardboard works great for suppressing weeds and it will naturally break down over time. What I do first is go around and remove any tape that's on the cardboard box. Then I lay out the cardboard and cover it with a thick layer of wood chips. This helps to hold the cardboard down and also helps to suppress the weeds. Over time, the cardboard will break down and some worms might even come up and eat that cardboard to help build healthy soil. Cardboard can be a bit tedious to lay down if you have a big area to cover. So if you wanna spend a few bucks, this is a great option right here. This is contractor's paper. It's essentially thin cardboard 
And one reason it's so great is because you can just lay it down, roll it out, and then cover it with wood chips, just like that. The eighth item is a simple cup. Some kinds of seeds are tough to get consistent germination on, like spinach or even sometimes peas. If you allow the seeds to soak in water for 24 hours before planting, this will greatly improve the germination rate. When planting spinach, I always let my seeds sit in a cup for 24 hours before I plant them out. It's easy to do, but makes a big difference, especially when you're planting spinach in the late summer for a fall crop. The ninth household item are eggshells. Eggshells are a good source of calcium, so you could either add them to your compost pile or you can crush them up using a food processor or even a mortar and pestle. That's what I did. You can sprinkle the crushed eggshells around your tomato plants when transplanting to add a free calcium boost. This will help prevent blossom and rot. Make sure to keep your tomato plants properly watered as well because consistent proper watering will also help prevent blossom and rot. Know that the eggshells take a little bit of time before they break down and before the calcium is actually bioavailable for the plants. So make sure to add the eggshells when first transplanting out your tomatoes. For the 10th household item, I have two, wood ashes, and coffee grounds. Wood ashes from a fire pit can be used as a natural source of potassium. Ashes are best when adding them to the compost pile. This way you can get the benefit of them without the risk of it negatively affecting your soil. If adding ashes directly to your soil, be careful not to add too much because ashes will raise the pH of your soil. So you only want to add some ash to your soil if your soil is acidic and is below about 6.5 pH. Used coffee grinds are also a great choice to add to the compost pile. By adding the coffee grounds to the compost pile, we're setting up the perfect scenario for the microorganisms to convert the nitrogen in the coffee grounds to a form that's readily available for the plants. The acid in the coffee grounds before you use them is water soluble. This way, after you use the coffee and make a cup of it, the acidity actually ends up in the cup rather than staying in the coffee grounds. Used coffee grounds have a pH of about 6.5 to 6.8, so that's not very acidic at all. It's actually quite neutral. But still, just to be safe, if you want to use coffee grounds directly in the garden, I would only suggest using it around acid-loving plants, something like your blueberries. Do you have any additional household items that you use in the garden let me and tuck know down in the comments we love recycling and we always love getting some free garden ideas do all of these items work as well as some products that are specifically designed for gardening no not all of them but i think they're great cheap alternatives especially when you're first getting started if you decide that you really love gardening and want to invest some money then you could pick up some specific products something like these epic seed cells these are an incredible value for the price but they're not super cheap if you're going to garden long term, it's a great option though because they last a very long time and they're super high quality. Before me and Tuck let you go, we want to show you a few things we've got growing on. For instance, right here, we've got a bunch of tomatoes that we're hardening off. You might think, man, that's a pretty good amount of tomatoes. That's nothing. Wait till you see what we have growing in the greenhouse. Check out everything we have growing in here. And these are only summer veggies. Tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, and a bunch of different kinds of flowers. Let me show you some of the beds because we already have all of our brassicas in and they're looking fantastic. The egg cartons work relatively well for starting seeds. The only thing is you have to transplant them out relatively quickly because they're just so shallow. As opposed to something like the solo cups right here. This pepper will be able to grow into this solo cup until it's ready to be transplanted outside. If I time this a little better, I could transplant right outside from this egg carton right here. But the thing is, my tomatoes need about two more weeks until they can actually be, can actually be transplanted out into the garden. I usually don't transplant my tomatoes into the garden until about May 20th. I'd rather be on the safe side because when temperatures drop down into like the 50s, even though that's not that low, the tomatoes aren't going to show much growth. They really like those hot, hot days. Me and Tuck want to give you a quick peek of one of the raised beds. You can see everything is starting to grow. All the spaces are starting to fill in and we're just super excited about it. One thing you'll notice is some of the white on the plants. That's due to the surround kaolin clay. It's just overspray from spraying it on our fruit trees because we need to keep spraying our trees with the surround kaolin clay to keep away our nemesis, the plum curculio. Look at this guy up here looking for some snacks. He thinks it's carrot time. It's not quite carrot time yet, boyo. And me and Tuck wanted to just send out a huge thank you to everybody. It was his birthday just about a week or so ago. We posted on YouTube about it and there was just an endless number of happy birthday wishes. So Tuck's really thankful for it. So am I. We're just really happy and we can't wait to do the tour because this is the time of year in early May where everything just starts blowing up in growth. The weather changes, things just start growing and all the harvests start coming in so quickly. So it's only a matter of time until we're just pulling out massive amounts of food. We can't wait. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck hope you take some of the ideas that we share with you and use them in your garden. It's it's nice to have some free, cheap alternatives and options if you don't feel like forking out a really lot of money just to get your garden started.
Me and Tuck wanted to thank one of our new channel members while we're here, John J40. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. We also wanted to mention to check out some of the merch down at jamesprizioni.com. Grab a t-shirt, one of the Gardening is Life one with the flower of life right on it. We really think they look awesome and it's probably going to be a limited time thing. So check them out at jamesprizioni.com. Tuck and James will be back to you again real soon. We out.